Save the children! Save the children! <laughs>to another episode of my something random so it's tuesday again and if you watched my last video we're doing a series of videos called wixify your shop what that is is we are adding digital angle readouts or digital readouts for as many tools as we can find in my shop now the last one was on the drill press today is going to be on the drum sander so the one we're going to be installing on the drum sander is going to be a bit of a custom install so Wixie makes one specifically for the Supermax drum sanders. Um, it's around $120, and it looks almost identical to this one. This is the one that people will use for their planers. This is the digital planer readout for mostly like the DeWalt planers. Everything is identical to the one that goes on this machine. The only difference is the one that comes with this machine comes with a bracket, and it's substantially more expensive. This one here runs $73.99, whereas the other one, I believe, runs to close to $120. So you're paying quite a bit more money just for a metal bracket. I think I've come up with a way to install this on this machine without having to buy that expensive bracket and save you guys a little bit of money. So hopefully you can follow along with what I'm going to do. If you can't, be sure and leave a comment down below. Um, and I'll try to go through this as precisely as I can for you. So let's start off by going through what comes in the box. So you have this, which normally would mount on your planer. You have some double-sided tape that it sticks up to the machine. And it comes with, like, I believe, a screw hole on the back to screw it down as well. So the first thing we are going to do is remove that little spring that just rolled away. And that attaches right here and returns this to where it needs to be. So up and down here. And this just clips in and hooks right there. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. And we're going to go ahead and bring this forward. Sorry. We're going to take that off there. And then we can slide that off. So what we're left with is the bracket. So the first thing I want you to do is you want you to drill two oversized holes. The reason we're going to do them oversized is so that we can make adjustments once we get it lined up on our machine. This is your box of hardware. So dumping that out, you're going to be supplied with a couple machine screws, which is a good thing because we'll need one of those. And then it also is... I believe supplied with the drill bit and then some number of different brackets. The bracket that we are going to use is this little bitty one right here and we are going to have to bend this. So the first thing we're going to do is take the screw. There's normally a screw right here and I did take it off. It's just a little bitty screw like this on this side here. and this is going to go and mount to the side. But we want to build this at a 90 degree, we want to bend this at a 90 degree angle. So we'll go ahead and bend that here. So before we bend our bracket, we're going to do a couple things to this machine here. So this is normally bent and it points to this depth gauge on the Supermax 2550 or I believe any of the Supermax sanders. This comes out very simply by a little Allen screw right around the side and, and so this pin pulls out. What I've done with this pin is I've just go ahead and straightened it out with a pair of pliers and we are gonna use this to attach our depth gauge so our depth gauge can move up and down on a track. Next, we are gonna go ahead and unscrew these two screws because we're gonna use the top screw for our mounting bracket. And that's why I want you to do them oversized so you can position it and we'll get it exactly to zero before we tighten it down. So 
So the two existing holes, unfortunately, both don't line up with the bracket. Now the top one we are gonna use, and we're gonna use the screw that just came off of that um, scale over there, but we're gonna have to drill one of our own holes. So just pick a spot, it doesn't matter where, but make them oversized, like I said, so you can adjust them. Make sure that these are exactly lined up when you do decide to drill your hole. So the drill bit that you're gonna use is the one that came in the drill press kit, and I believe it's a 3.6 millimeter. And there should be a couple machine screws left in that. So we'll get that drilled. Okay, so we're gonna take that little bracket and we're gonna bend it. We're not gonna bend it at a perfect 90 degree angle, but what this is gonna do is it's gonna help us hold it because we need to drill a hole. Now that little rod that I showed you that you're gonna take out of the machine is gonna be a 1364 uh, size drill bit, a five Four. millimeter. Either one will get you close, so this would be able to fit in one of those little holes. So I built it, bent it just a little ways so we can get a good little hold at it from the side and go ahead and drill that. So I went ahead and re-drilled the holes, and as you can see, I really drew them, drilled them oversized, but an easy way just to compensate for that is just to throw a washer on top, um, and then you'll have a lot of adjustment up and down, side to side, so you can get that lined up perfectly. So now we need to install our ruler. Now you can do this one of two ways. The easiest way I found is go ahead and stick it in from the top and we're gonna go ahead and hook the spring. But before we stick the bottom half of it in, we're gonna feed the spring through, hook right on there. Now we're gonna take our angle gauge, slide it up there and it should just fit back in like that. So now we're gonna attach it. So your screw that you took out the side should come with a little washer. Don't lose that washer because you'll need it. The last thing that we need to do is set our absolute zero. And what do I mean by that? Absolute zero on this machine is gonna be where the sandpaper touches the conveyor belt, basically where you have no, you know, put a piece of paper in between it and you call that zero. The way you're gonna set for that is you're gonna lower the machine all the way down and stick your finger in the hole and rotate it by hand until you can feel the paper scraping on your conveyor belt. That needs to correlate with that being all the way down and to read zero on the numerical uh, typed scale or the printed scale, whatever you want to call it, here. Now we are going to go ahead and turn it on and we can set the zero digitally. Now if we want to be able to use both the printed scale and the digital and then read the same, this digital scale needs to be adjusted up and down so that it reads register zero on this when that is touching the conveyor belt. And the only way to do that is to really drill oversized holes on this. Um, I would drill a half inch hole on both sides and use the washers. Then you can really adjust it side to side and then in and out as well. Now the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do since we've already lowered it down and tested to see what our zero is, is we're gonna go ahead and put our batteries in here. It takes two AAA batteries, and the battery slot's a little bit large. I thought it took AA, but it actually took AAA. We're gonna turn it on. Now, if it doesn't read zero, you can set absolute zero by adjusting it just a little bit to wherever you want it, and we'll set that. So ABS is gonna be your absolute zero. 
your I and C is going to be where you want to zero it out anywhere. Now, if you want to put it to millimeters, just hit the top button and it will go to millimeters. But this one will read fractions as well as a decimal. So we're going to go ahead and raise it up and we're going to go to half an inch and thereabouts. Now you should be reading half an inch on this little ruler here. If it doesn't, then you can adjust it. The other way to test this too um, and get it where you want it is to run a piece of wood through here and then just take your digital calipers and then you can set your absolute zero to base off of the piece of wood that goes through here. It's fairly simple to do. Um, looks a little bit cleaner without the big bracket hanging on, but if you feel uncomfortable setting it up the way I did, I will include a link to the one that contains the bracket. Then you will have no drilling required and it's already tapped and has screw holes on the side of the machine. Um, they're actually just right down here for the bracket and it's designed for the bracket. Anyways guys, hope you liked it and if you have any comments or questions, shoot me a message below and I'll put the links up. Thanks so much guys, bye.